In 1974, Anatoly Karpov became world champion. Uh, there is no need to, for me to introduce you who Anatoly Karpov is and what his strength because his records speak for themselves. So he was world champion for many, many years and he has countless of absolutely brilliant games brilliant tactically and positionally. He uh, won games against all the big names uh, in chess at that time and he was one of the best, what, he was the best player for at least 20 years. At least 20 years he won, he won more international tournament than any other player in history. Next game um, I'm going to show you it's a game between Anatoly Karpov and Boris Spassky and Anatoly Karpov was then not world champion yet. It was early in 74 in the year when he became world champion but it was early before that in the world championship semi-final match game number six between uh, Anatoly Karpov be between Boris Spassky and Anatoly Karpov. This game was very, very positional. There was no tactics involved. An absolute brilliant, in my opinion, and I admire this game. And let me tell you why, what is so fascinating about this game. Spassky is playing white, e4, c6, d4, d5, knight, c3, d takes e, knight takes e4, bishop f5, knight g3, bishop g6, knight f3. Now, knight f3 is not the main variation in this position. Frequently, h4 is a played. But knight f3 is the way Spassky likes to play against this variation of Karl Kani, and he has played it many times very successfully. Knight f3, knight d7, preventing knight e5, bishop d3, e6, white castled, knight f6, all those moves are easily understandable, c4, bishop d6, and b3, castled, bishop b2, and queen c7. Uh, it's very solid for black, white has some space advantage, but black has absolutely no weaknesses. After uh, queen c7, bishop takes g6, pawn takes g6, hg, queen to e2, rook to e8. It's, again, I want to point that position is very, very quiet, very simple. There is no breakthrough white can uh, do anywhere, but on the other hand, black does not have very active plan. Position is slightly better for white. Rook f to e8, knight to e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4. Bishop e7. That's a good positional move. White wants maybe to play bishop f6, putting pressure on d4 pawn and maybe try c5 later. Rook, after bishop e7, rook a to e1, a to d1. Queen to a5, white played a3. And queen to f5. And white played simply queen e2. Uh, if white exchanges queens, position is approximately equal because sp space advantage does not mean anything in this type of position. Uh, so white played queen e2, g5, h3, rook d8, rook e1, g4, pawn takes g4, 
and the queen takes g4. Now here is the position that very, very uh, difficult to predict what the plan is going to be for white or for black. White can try d5 in this position. That's what happened in the game. But if white does not do d5, then they have absolutely no plan. Uh, no plan to make any progress. I think maybe the best try was rook d3 and try to play rook d1 or rook e3. d5 is a very interesting idea. Black played c takes d, c takes d, and next move played by Anatoly Karpov was very, very difficult. And it's beginning of a very interesting strategical plan. This is, um, to go for the position that he went to, it's very difficult for any grandmaster. Uh, for any grandmaster, it's very difficult to go voluntarily for that position. White played e5. Black played e5. Now, what is this move about? Black wants to shut the bishop on b2 and play bishop d6. Now, if black accomplishes, if, Bla if black succeeds to play bishop d6, then going f5 next will give black big advantage. But white has two moves. One is d6, and the other is knight takes e5. Now, what is the story about this position? If white plays knight takes e5, here is the black's idea. This is a very deep idea. Queen takes e2, rook takes e2. And now bishop d6, forcing white to play rook d to e1. And now knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, and bishop takes a3. This position is much better position for black. Because d5 pawn is weak, and black has two pawns on a queen side versus one, and that, and especially the weakness of d5 pawn, gives black an advantage. So Spassky refused to take the pawn, and so he chose the second option. And as I mentioned before, the second option was d6. And that's what he played. White cannot allow black to play bishop d6. And d6, after d6, uh, black's uh, bishop must move to f6 or f8. Bishop f6 and knight d2. Now this is very interesting position. After queen takes e2, rook takes e2, and rook c8. Now let's talk about d6 pawn. Is this d6 pawn, this is not an ordinary pawn. This pawn may be either just a pass, strong pass pawn, or maybe weak pawn. That's the battle all about. The Karpov's assumption, Karpov's evaluation was correct. This is more of a weak pawn since it's blocked by knight and had easy access by black's rooks than strength. It's more of a weakness than strength. So rook c8, knight e4, and bishop d8. Now black has luxury of moving pieces backwards because what they want to do, they want to go f5 and or f6 and later bring the king to e6. Slowly surround the d6 pawn. That's what the big idea is about. That's, and this position was widely analyzed after the game was played and um, conclusion was that Black has a better position. This pawn is more of a weakness. And it's uh, interesting to notice how um, Karpov took advantage of it. Now, 
black wants to go f5, so g4 is natural move, and now black goes f6. Now they taught us every strong player went to a school that teaches when you have dark square bishop, you gotta keep your pawns on uh, light squares. You have to keep your pawns on the colors opposite of your bishop. If you have light square bishop, keep pawns. Here, Karpov does everything opposite of the basic rule, but that's the strength of a uh, world-class uh, world class player that he has to recognize exceptions. This is an exception. By keeping g7, f6, e5 chain, black shuts off the b2 bishop. Meanwhile, their own dark square bishop has intention of going to b6. And it also, by playing f6, black, uh, black is intending to bring king on f7 to e6, surround the d6 pawn. f6 is a very strong move, white got king g2, king f7, and now white, after king f7, white goes rook c1. Black goes rook bishop b6, now white goes rook c2. Black has to take, white takes back, and now king goes to e6. In this position, white has the c file, but they cannot penetrate. There is no penetration squares. And what black wants to do, maybe go g6 and f5 eventually, or maybe even coming up with a king on d5, or if black now manages somehow to exchange rooks, white will be losing the d6 pawn. So in the, white went a4. Very strong response is a5, because white cannot allow, black cannot allow white to play b4 and a5 to squeeze the bishop here. A on b4, uh, black, black went on a4, black went a5, and bishop to a3 by white. Now they are protecting the d6 pawn, uh, and also maybe they want to play b4. Rook to b8. This is a good move. Intention, black's intention is to go bishop d4 and b5, possibly activate rook. There is no other file this black's rook can play. So black has to penetrate with the rook somehow. H file, there is no penetration squares on H file. So rook b8 preparing bishop d4 and b5. Rook c4 for white. Now this is an interesting move. White sees already. This is the sign of a good player and Spassky was definitely a good player. So he played rook c4. He already, in this position, anticipated black to play bishop d4 and b5. And rook c4, black must go on with the plan. And now f4, and now we will see why b5 is not working as well for black now. Because after b5, White goes f5 check, or actually a b first, it's better. Rook takes b5, and now f5 check. This is very strong for white. King d5 and knight c3 check, forcing black to take. And after rook takes to c3, you see that it's very difficult uh, to stop white from playing rook c7 and black's king cannot come back anymore so rook c7 is very strong that would have been dangerous position for black and that was the i what the, that's the idea of a f4 move played by uh, uh, rook c4 and f4 played by spassky g6 must be played and that's what 
G6 must be, that's what played by um, Karpov. Now, they still want to go F5 and possibly B5. So, how many continuations white has here? So, after, after F4 and G6, white played knight to G3. And white wants to go F5 anyway. Very strong move. E takes F, rook takes D4, and F takes G, King takes G3, and Rook to C8. Now you see clearly that White's dark square bishop has no future. Only mission of the, this dark square bishop is to protect the D6 pawn. So Black is clearly better now. And after Rook C8, Rook to D3, must stop rook c3 check, rook to d3, and now g5. This is another move of a great, great positional player. g5, again, looks like black violates the rule of opponent has dark square bishop. You don't put pawns on dark squares because they may become targets later. But if you go g5, so you have to keep as many pawns on the board as possible. You're fixing the weakness. Weakness is frozen on g4. Possible knight e5 in future. And um, after the, this g5 move is very powerful. Bishop b2, b6, Bishop d4, rook c6, and bishop c3. Black did not take on d6. Now, I'm going to ask um, audience, why would black not take on d6? This is clearly extra pawn for no seeming compensation. Maybe that's what black should have done, and black misses simple win. That's not so. Move made by Carpo was rook c5 is much stronger move. Rook takes d6. I think it's an easy draw for white, because after exchange, and b4, black has to take, white takes on b4, and this position cannot be won. Because on king d5, white is going to play bishop e7, and there is no way that black can make any progress. King c4, bishop d8. And if you go uh, king c4, actually maybe even king f3. And after king b3, well, this is the position that we got. King d5, bishop e7 is one move. Even a5 is a simply... Probably f5 is the best move. It, it's a simple move, and there will no, no way uh, black can win this position. On b5, even if we go a4, black cannot win. King c6, king f3, king b6, king e4. And after king takes a6, king f5 followed by king e6. Black is not even better in this position. So that's why black must keep rooks on the board. It was played actually bishop c3 and not bishop d2. And b after bishop c3, that's why black played rook to c5. Now king g2 played by white. It's very only, only waiting move because white does not want to move the bishop, let black's rook penetrate. So they don't want to move the rook because they may lose the spawn on d6. So they make waiting move with the king by going king g2. Black played rook c8 and white goes king g3 back and here knight to e5. Knight to e5 is very, very interesting move. 
it forces white to play bishop takes e5. Obviously, white cannot move the rook because black simply takes the pawn and keeps the rooks on the board. So bishop has to take on e5, pawn takes e5, and in this position, black is simply threatening rook d8 and rook takes d6. Um, black tried b4. This is the desperation attempt to um, somehow to get some counter chances and exchange pawns on a queen side. You see, if we take queen side pawns away from the board, position is drawn, but presence of these pawns makes white's position very and very difficult. After b4, black played e4. This is a winning move. Rook to d4, king to e5. You see, black is not in a great hurry to get to win the pawn on d6, because winning pawn on d6 uh, will uh, probably, if black played rook d8 after b takes a, b takes a, and uh, white may go, I don't know, rook f3 and rook f5, or rook b3, and after taking rook b5, and after rook d5 check, rook d b6 check, after rook d5. And this position is going to be very difficult to win, although black does have, black does have uh, winning chances. But the move made by black is very, very strong. e4, rook d4, king to e5. White simply played rook d1, and now a takes b. And now after white played rook b1, now simply rook c3 check, king g2, king f2, rook d3, d7, rook takes d7, rook takes b4, and black in this position has to make very strong move to win. So the, the strong move in this position is rook d6. Now, you may go king f4 and give b6 pawn and take g4 pawn, which also will give you winning chances. But temporarily holding the b6 pawn and threatening king f4 is a lot stronger. White played king e3, and after Black gave check, and white went king e2, and black played rook a3, white simply resigned. Here, white loses second pawn on g4. If white plays rook takes b6, black plays rook takes a4, and white cannot stop black from going king f4, and king takes g4. This is totally lost for white. I think it's fascinating and beautiful and great game played by Anatoly Karpov. You see, there was not one super active moves. And art of chess is not only the playing very actively, very aggressively and win. There is an art of taking advantage of unjustified aggressive moves and superactive, uh, hyperactive moves by playing great positional uh, chess and capitalizing on opponent's weaknesses. Black fully capitalized on a weakness of a white pawn on d6 and white pawn on g4. Just see the final position. This is great performance by world champion, by former world champion Anatoly Karpov.